Hi all you village people. This is day four of my lifestyle visit and I'm going to apologize in advance for the long lag between the video of day three and this video for day four. Here in Louisiana we just went through Hurricane Ida and um, still going through the aftermath of that. Um, although I didn't have as much damage as my neighbors in south, southeastern Louisiana and along the river and coastal parishes, um, we did lose power for a number of days. I did do a little video, I think we were on day three with no power. Um, I kind of wanted to show you what it was like and some of the equipment that um, is helpful. Uh, post hurricane even if you're central centrally located in a state you don't have to live on the coast to um, have the effects of, of the damage that can come from that but this is day four it was a beautiful sunny day again um, it did rain in the early evening uh, we looked at more houses open houses here's our daily sun and uh, as was typical the open houses generally start around 3 or 4 p.m. and by that time there were multiple offers on uh, those homes but our villages rep did take us to look at some model homes near Chitty Chatty um, this was one of the uh, homes that actually had an open house that was listed in the Daily Sun but it was sold by the time we got there. I did walk around and just uh, looked at the out outside. Um, I do like the little bird cages that they have on the back of some of the homes and Oops, I skipped a pick. Sorry about that. This is a better view. And the birdcage just means that you can actually see up as well. Uh, the older, or the original models, I guess I should say, actually had uh, the roofs continue over those lanais on the back. But um, really did like the look of the bird cages. Lots of light. Uh, here was the neighborhood pool and postal station uh, in that area. Just some bocce ball courts and uh, shuffleboard. Uh, went through the village of Summer Hill. And y'all, here's, I just had to take a picture at the entrance to the Walmart because it was really beautiful. And I had already mentioned that um, it looks like you're turning into a country club. This is a goal that I actually made for myself. I was actually driving uh, for this trip, but the goal was that I was going to cross that bridge in a golf cart, and that is on the day five video. The whole way, me on that golf cart all by myself, and I crossed over the little Brownwood Bridge and then onto the Water Lily Bridge, and it was a lot of fun. This is just some more of the impeccable, be, uh, impeccably beautiful landscaping that's all around the villages. Just always a beautiful drive. It's the adult Disney, remember? All right, on to the model homes. These are the two folded villages maps of the original and uh, I guess older sections. It covers all the way to Brownwood and then the newer section. And I laid them sort of top to bottom uh, just to kind of give you an idea how big this place is. If they had made one map of the villages top to bottom, you wouldn't even be able to read the names of the streets. So I, I see why they're making it in uh, two maps. All right, as we were on our way to uh, check out the model homes, one of the streets that we came across was Canal Boulevard. And it wasn't Canal Street, but it did remind me a little bit of New Orleans in my uh, home state. This pic, I wanted to kind of give you an idea about the garages. and. 
these are listed these homes are listed as two car garages and you absolutely can fit two cars in there but I kind of wanted to give you a view of what it's like to have one car and one golf cart in inside people were able to show their support for their favorite candidate as long as you don't put political signs in your yard they seem to find a way to do that I kind of thought that was interesting that it was in the window I actually thought it was a for sale sign so that's actually why I walked up to the house and took the picture here was a recreation area lots of people at this uh, pool and postal neighborhood station this was our um, route um, that we took to get to the new area here was the first model home that we looked at it was um, the alder and y'all it was just decorated so cute I can't wait for you to see the inside this was the kitchen area bath with the glass doors there was a pop of this sunflower yellow in every room it was really cute isn't that an adorable bed the bedrooms in the alder model are nice size it was a three bedroom two bath They use the third bedroom as sort of a den um, situation in the villages. A lot of people do. Not not all, but that it seemed like I ran across that a lot. These lanai's were not kissing lanai's. If you're not familiar with that term, I wasn't either. Kissing lanai's just mean that you are literally looking straight into your backyard neighbor's lanai and they're looking into yours. These were offset, so they were non-kissing, I guess. <laughs> nice amount of space between uh, these model homes. They will eventually are going to go um, for sale, but they weren't at the time of my lifestyle visit. Here's the other side view I kind of wanted you to be able to see the texture of the homes that are the stucco built with blocks um, very very nice and then here is a home with the vinyl siding The next model home that we looked at was called the Jasmine, and it was my favorite floor plan. It was a nice open concept. The flooring was beautiful in this one. I think they call it luxury vinyl plank flooring. This was that extra third bedroom that some are using as like a little den. Um, this one was really creative. The decorators looked like they had a lot of fun, uh, sort of a fishing underwater theme. This one was decorated lovely as well. This was a Roman shower. I like the rectangle tiles um, going up like that. That was a nice touch. Now the decorators for the model homes, sometimes they even decorate the closets. Like they'll just like put some cute outfits and what have you. <laughs> it just was interesting. This model is called the Sycamore. It had a lovely lanai that went all the way across the back. Obviously, that's going to be an upgrade, but it was spectacular. 
lots of updated light lighting fixtures and that kind of thing. Beautifully decorated. This wasn't the, um, let me go back. This wasn't the luxury vinyl plank. These are actually um, tile flooring that looks like wood. The next model home was the Whispering Pine. I really like the layout of the kitchen in this one. It didn't have just a rectangular island. It um, had a one curved edge and I really like that. This was just a close-up picture so that I could remember for myself of what the textured walls looked like, the interior walls of the um, model homes. It, it, a really nice texture. This was the laundry room. This particular model had a fishing theme. This was a, court, a courtyard villa in Hemingway at the time of my lifestyle visit that was for sale for $249,500 and courtyard villas now in uh, mid-September are in the 300s. The villages had left complimentary tickets to uh, see a play at the Sharon for us. And it, uh, the Sharon is located in Spanish Springs. So, and it was actually our first drive out there. So we explored a little bit, had uh, dinner in Spanish Springs first. So we arrived a little early and um, this was their town square. very beautiful lots of landscaping and beautiful trees and here is the that famous statue of um harold swartz this sort of disney reminisce uh and um it's there in uh, spanish springs all right on to the sharon this was, we arrived early, so we were one of the first ones into the theater. It had actually just started to sprinkle rain a little bit, and um, they opened the doors a little bit early for us. And they actually have ushers that open the door. Isn't that cool? This was the name of the play that we saw. It was called Spike Heels, and it was absolutely fabulous. It was hilarious. It had a little bit of salty language, but as long as you know that ahead of time, it was very organic to the plot. It's a young lady who lives in New York City and she's going through dating and living alone and working. And so there was, prob there was a lot of reason for some salty language in that, in that play. Uh, the Sharon is named for Sharon Morse. And um, as you enter, there's a a beautiful portrait of her. This is the, I guess, reception type area as you're entering and people were just gathered and having their drinks and waiting for the show to start. Y'all, we were in line to get drinks. There were three lines and every single person that would, not every single person, most most people were walking up and they would say, I'll have a Cape Cod in a sippy cup. I'll have white wine in a sippy cup. I'll have whatever in a sippy cup. I had no idea what they were even talking about. It is exactly what you're thinking. These are adult sippy cups. It's so that you can take your drink into the theater and the cost of the tickets the the cost that was listed on our ticket was fifteen dollars the seats were i'm gonna say seven or eight rows from the edge of the stage 
and uh, this and my, the drink in the sippy cup was ten dollars. This was the stage prop. Sure. It actually had a sign that said not to take um, photographs or video during the performance, but this was before the play started. So I, I hope it was okay. Oops. We were some of the fir first ones in. It was pretty crowded. Y'all, it doesn't take a whole lot to impress me, but this these were in the ladies' restroom at the Sharon. I have no idea what this is for, but I, there's really no reason that a lady would have to pick the seat up to use the restroom, but I have, I, I was just very impressed. Is it for the, maybe the cleaning crew so that they don't have to put their, I would think that they wore gloves anyway, but maybe you could hang your purse on there. I'm just not sure. What do you guys think this is, this is for? Well, this is going to be an awkward segue to the next topic. <laughs> all right, it is on to all about food in the villages. I got a lot of questions about food. Uh, what did we eat? Where did we eat? Was it expensive to eat in the villages, etc. I'm hoping I can cover that in this little segment. Um, for breakfast, we bought kind of quick breakfast items at Publix uh, with coffee breakfast bars, fruit, wraps, that kind of thing. We ate in the villa for most bre breakfasts. And um, so I'm gonna go over the lunches and dinners that where we ate at restaurants and the cost per person, for one person. And um, it's w including tax, but before the tip. Just wanted to make a note of that. All right, let's get started. The first restaurant that we ate at was Fiesta Grande. It was for a dinner in Brownwood. We had um, fajitas and a drink. And y'all, the $7 frozen margaritas are so good there. Um, and it was very delicious. And this meal's total was $24.68. The next place was a lunch at Bonifay Country Club. Uh, I had the tropical shrimp salad and a drink. And here's the back little patio bar uh, covered area that faces the golf course. And it was absolutely beautiful there. And the total of that meal was $17.21. We had a pre-drink dinner in Lake Sumter Landing at Cody's, and that total was $7. This is a little sign posted outside of the Lighthouse Point restaurant, and fact or fiction, as the story goes, Mr. Wagoner, commonly known as the Commodore, purchased the point of waterfront land just north of downtown and over the next 10 years proceeded to single-handedly build both a home and a functioning lighthouse on the site. For the next 25 years he served as a self-appointed lighthouse keeper and village eccentric. The Commodore was reportedly never happier than on those few nights a year when fog or thunderstorms or hurricanes actually made his lighthouse seem a necessity instead of a curiosity. And this is the restaurant, the boardwalk that leads up to it, and you can uh, see a little peak of um, Lake Sumter in the background. Even from the inside, um, seating is r right on the lake, beautiful views. I had the blackened fish tacos and a drink, and it was absolutely delicious. And this meal was $16.04. The next place that we ate was for a lunch at Evans Prairie Country Club. Um, I had the cilantro lime chicken bowl and a drink, and I didn't get a picture of that. 
Um, it was $17.95 for that meal. And the next restaurant was a dinner uh, at Brownwood at Bluefin. I highly recommend this restaurant. It was absolutely delicious. Little um, out, it's the outdoor seating area has have have these little screens, and the sun in the evening as it's setting uh, does kind of beat down on this little patio area quite a bit. So it was nice that they had those screens, but they did raise them once the sun set, and it was really nice sitting out there. In the evenings, there were still um, cool breezes. I have a couple of pictures of the menu here. And I had the lump crab cakes with lemon rice pilaf and grilled asparagus and a drink. My friend who lives in Florida ordered the New Orleans jambalaya. That's how it was listed on the menu. And y'all, it was bright red, not brown. In Louisiana, there's two types of jambalaya. Cajun jambalaya is the most popular and it has no tomatoes in the recipe. And then there's a Creole jambalaya that does have tomatoes. And it's definitely a personal preference, but I just like my jambalaya rice to be brown. <laughs> Anyway, she did clean her plate and said it was very good, but I'm going to make her a delicious Cajun jambalaya when I get to the villages. And the next restaurant was City Fire. It was for a lunch at Brownwood. I had the flatbread pizza. It was very delicious and a drink. And the total for that meal was $15.53. Oh, did I, I forgot. The blue fin total was $32.96. Sorry about that. And the next restaurant was Gator's Dockside in Spanish Springs. I had a sea breeze salad with grilled chicken and a drink. And that meal was $16.68, and I didn't get a picture of the salad. The next location was World of Beer. We had lunch there, and let's see, it was a burger and fries on this delicious, fresh, soft brioche bun, and that meal was $16.05. I was really disappointed that I didn't get a picture of the restaurant or the lasagna that I had here at Prima. Um, I grabbed this off of um, the internet actually. It was absolutely delicious. This is definitely a not not to miss restaurant. If you're going to splurge one night and go to one of the premium restaurants, this might be the one I would highly recommend. I had lasagna and a drink and that meal was $30.14. And afterwards, um, we had a little treat uh, in Brownwood and it was a little ice cream shop called Scoople's and I had uh, an, an ice cream cone turned upside down so I could eat it with a spoon. It was $5.25. Here's a little board with some other offerings. The total with tax for all of those meals for five days, including tax, but before tips was $214.49. The next questions had to do with fast food. Or is there any fast food restaurants in the villages? 100% yes. You kind of have to drive the perimeter to find them. There is um, Five Guys and Dunkin' Donuts and Panera in the squares. But if you drive out to 466A or 466, you'll find them. 
on um, 466A, they have a lot of new construction. And my goodness, all the fast food restaurants look beautiful, just like this Win Wendy's. Even the Walmart there looks like you're turning into a country club before you get to it. But here is a map um, just kind of dotted with the various fast food restaurants. This is 466 and on in, in this general area and near Highway 27, you have an Arby's, McDonald's, Subway, Golden Corral, Olive Garden, IHOP, Culver's, Steak and Shake, Sonic, Wendy's, Applebee's, Burger King, Chicken Salad Chick, Chick-fil-A, Outback, Pizza Hut, Papa John's, Arby's, Texas Roadhouse, and McDonald's. And then on 466A, you, there is a McDonald's, Wendy's, Subway, Taco Bell, Jersey Mike's, Burger King, and a PDQ. Another question asked is, is my bank in the villages or what banks are in the villages? Um, these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven banks that were most prevalent. I uh, did see many others, but these seem to be the most prevalent that had actual locations, not just an ATM machine, um, with Citizens First Bank being the most prevalent in the villages. So here they are, uh, Citizens First Bank. Here are all the locations um, and ATMs uh, within the villages. This is SunTrust. They have the second most locations. This is Chase Bank. They came in third. This is PNC Bank. Note, there's actually only one physical location and these are three ATMs. Bank of America. There are two drive-through only services and one lobby. Regions Bank, there's only one location in the villages. Wells Fargo, three locations. All right, it's giveaway time. At the end of the day three video, we discussed doing a giveaway by just subscribing to the channel and commenting with subscribed or any comment that you wanted. And this little dish towel was going to be the giveaway. I uh, had met a friend in the villages and made one for her as a thank you for helping and showing me around a bit. And this is going to be um, the giveaway. I numbered the comments starting with the earliest comment first and we had a total of 19. So here they are in numerical order, but they're kind of going backwards because the first comments were the lowest on the list. And you can review the video again to catch where your name falls and what number you are. I also found a little Wheel of Fortune sort of number generator, and that's how we are going to select the winner of the little dish towel. All right, it's already set from 1 to 19, and here we go. Let's see who the winner will be. And the winner is dot com mom. Dot com mom, if you can email uh, me at a tiger in the villages at gmail.com and drop your address in there, we'll get that sent out right away. You can um, have it sent to your home address or your work address. 
um, just drop that in an email to us. I'll also have the email listed in the description if you didn't catch that. Congratulations! I hope you enjoy! Yay!